Traders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching the Laid Back Bike Report. We are so glad to have you with us today. We are glad to be on the air. We uh, are in the middle of trying out a new platform. Uh, we have for a number of years been using the uh, Google Hangouts on air uh, to bring you this webcast. Today, we're going with something new called StreamYard. So a few technical difficulties getting started, but I think we uh, have those worked out. We have a lot of nice features in StreamYard that's gonna, uh, I think, make this broadcast a lot more interesting, fun, and uh, we're gonna show you some of those things as we, as we go along today. But if there's a few glitches, we hope you'll uh, understand and, and stick with us. We'll get better as we go. All right, so what is going on in today's, uh, uh, today's webcast? We have some folks to uh, talk to today. First of all, uh, Brian Ball is here uh, to bring you the news. Hello, Brian. Hello, how's it going? Good, good. And uh, we have from uh, Scotland, uh, John Hotkin, Intertuba is here with us. Hello, John. Hello, everybody, how are you? Very nice to have you. Uh, we have Kyle Bryant, also known as the A Taxian from uh, around Philadelphia. Kyle, we're really glad to have you today. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Very good. Uh, we're going to have uh, later on in the show uh, Jeff Wood uh, from El Melbourne, Australia, talking about the new uh, G Trike Glide uh, Velomobile. We're going to talk about that later on. He'll be with us later. Denny Voorhees is uh, doubling up as our director today and going to be doing the sports cast later. Denny, uh, doubling up you. as we speak. That's right. And uh, finally, uh, Trey Burgoyne. Oh, Hello, Brian, everybody. Brian is muted. He can't even do the Burgoyne. Um, Burgoyne. <laughs> thank you. Uh, right on the media desk doing our slideshow. Uh, Trey, great to have you with us today to be here. as well. Great. All right, uh, Denny, back to the single shot, if you would. And I want to talk about how you can subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you look uh, a little bit uh, down in the lower right corner, uh, you're going to see uh, a little uh, green uh, laid back bike report logo. You probably also see it whoop, up there on my, uh, on my quilt in the background. But uh, yeah, the lower right hand corner, if you click on that, that's going to take you to the YouTube channel and we'll subscribe you. So please take advantage of that if you haven't already. And the upper right hand corner, you're going to see a little white letter I pop up. Uh, and that is for information. It will uh, click on that and it will lead you to our website where you can find out a lot more about what we do. Uh, we have a ton of people on the live chat uh, already uh, today. <laughs> Some of them have been waiting around for a little while, so that's understandable. We appreciate your patience. Uh, if you would like to get on the live chat, if you're watching us right now, don't know exactly how to do that. If you're on YouTube, uh, if you look uh, over to uh, your right, you'll see uh, the live chat right there at the bottom. Just uh, type in your comments, hit enter, and uh, we'll take a look, uh, respond to them. And if you have questions or comments for our guests, we will put that to them uh, there. Uh, if you're watching us on uh, Bent Rider or uh, Facebook or Twitter, uh, you want to uh, go uh, move your cursor in the middle and click the YouTube logo on the uh, lower right-hand side there. Go right to the YouTube page, and then you'll be able to watch uh, and uh, participate in the live chat down there. If you're on the Layback Back Report webpage, uh, you'll see the live chat right next to the live screen over there, so we're good to go there. Let's talk about our wonderful sponsors right now. They are TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories for your bent, and Trailside.bike, a fine recumbent bike shop on the Withlacoochee Trail in Florida, and Cruise Bike, designed for cyclists who want to ride farther, climb faster, and adventure more. All cruise bikes and frame sets are ship are set to ship free in the USA and Lightning Cycles, the aerospace design and race across America owning recumbent you have always wanted. All right, folks, uh, we are glad to be underway. If you want to come on back to me, there we go. Uh, we do have, as I mentioned earlier, Brian Ball with us from Bent Rider today with some uh, news for you. Brian, are you ready to go? I'm absolutely ready to go. Let's do it. I'm liking the new setup. We're going to get used to it. It's going to be fun. All right. Um, uh, you want to pop first slide? 
Yeah, there we go. Uh, first, we'll talk about the uh, Catrike Eola. It is in dealers now. It's available. Uh, I do want to give a, a quick shout out to Applaud Catrike for it did come out when they said it was going to. That doesn't always happen in the bike industry or in a lot of industries anymore. So it is available in in your local shop right now, 1995. Uh, very, very cool trike. I have one here. The review is actually going up tomorrow or the next day. Uh, I just got to see when it, the rain's going to stop so I can take a few photos of it. I do have one here. A uh, very, very cool trike. I'm going to say, even though it's the least expensive cat trike, it is probably the best handling one they make. It's so much fun. It does have that little through axle in the back uh, like the uh, like the 700 had. You, I think you can kind of um, kind of gather that if the most expensive trike, they one of the most expensive trikes they make, and the least expensive trike they make has that, it's probably going to trickle through the rest of the line. Uh, just really stiffens up the rear end, handles a whole lot better. Uh, it does have a few things for cost cutting. It is their least expensive trike, so there's no adjustable seat. Uh, it currently just comes with a 1x11 drivetrain, which I actually found to be perfectly adequate. Uh, but um, if you want a triple, you're going to have to spend extra and get your dealer to order a boom with a triple mount on it and do your own thing. Uh, but I know it comes in three colors instead of the multiple ones, but a really awesome trike. It's really, really cool. And uh, a little plug, uh, yeah, I, I, our demo is going to be for sale. It is actually for sale now. So you want to you want to get a deal on one, you know, go to the, go to the Ben Rider and check it out. It's in the for sale section there. Uh, next up, we have, here we go. Uh, we have the Ice Ergolux seat, which is so comfortable. It's one of the most comfortable seats that I've ever sat on on a trike. It is now available across the line, pretty much. It used to only be on the uh, on the Adventure. Now it's also available on the Sprint. It's not available for the VTX yet, but it is on the Sprint now. Uh, it's, it's such a comfortable seat, and I'm very happy to see them uh, moving this uh, onto the Sprint also. I think if you're buying if you're buying a Sprint, you know, let's face it, they're not terribly inexpensive. It's worth the extra, I think, 100, 100 I think it's like 100 bucks, 150 bucks to upgrade to that seat. I, I would recommend it. Super, super comfortable seat. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. And then I haven't gotten much leaks from Spetsy yet. Did you, Gary? I was kind of expecting we'd have some little leaks by now. You know what, Brian? I haven't seen too much uh, yeah. from uh, there. I know there's going to be quite a few new Velomobile vendors there. I did hear about that. So we're yeah. kind of excited about that. But uh, always something new popping up there, even if we don't get a heads up. So we're looking yeah. forward to, to, to going there and seeing you there. Yeah, keep an eye out on Ben Rider, though. It, as soon as I usually the week before, it's usually like when I'm already over there, I start getting a whole lot of emails with stuff people want me to post. So keep an eye on Bent Rider on our front page. We'll be posting. We're on our Facebook page. We'll be posting everything that we get as the time comes sooner. Absolutely. All right. So, and that's, uh, folks, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Spetsy later on in the show, but I think that's a couple weeks, uh, two weeks from now, I think two weeks from this weekend. Yeah. So yeah, Brian and I will be there covering it in our own respective ways and collaborating, who collaborating where we can. So uh, look for that. Where yeah whatever we're gonna do yeah <laughs> all right guys thank you brian appreciate that um uh, i wanted to say hi to some of the folks that have been patient and been on chat since the start here uh mark uh, donnie mcleod hello edwin shavy we see you room 360 hello uh bob pelton hello bob uh we have uh, carrie borodichuk uh, hello carrie Larry Hobbs uh, from Jersey Bents. Uh, hello, Larry. Glad to have you with us today. Let's see who else we have. Joe Lapata. Uh, let's see. Donald Dicer. Yep. First timer. Good to have you with us uh, today. Uh, Andrew Hatchett, a friend of ours uh, that helps us with our streaming uh, questions from time to time. Andrew, thank you for watching. Susan Straley was on our last show. Uh, Susan uh, wrote that uh, wonderful book, uh, Alzheimer's with George. And uh, Susan, hello. We're glad you made it. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it for now. So if oh, we can, I, can I say one more really quick thing about Please Spetsy? go ahead, Brian. No problem. I, just, uh, we have, I might have to jump off before we do the Spetsy thing because of the limited people on this. But um. Uh, if you see me at Betsy, come up and say hi. I had a couple people email me afterwards and say, I saw you, but I didn't want to bother you. No, come up, come up and say hi. Come bother me. I always appreciate it. It's a good thing. Yeah, we love to have people uh, stop and say hi to us, too. We're all, you know, we're busy. We're working. But uh, honestly, we're doing it for you guys. So we want to interact and meet yeah, you guys. We, are, we always have a minute. Yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, let's uh, move on to uh, to the main portion of the show and uh, our first guest today. Who hasn't wondered how tuba players get themselves from one gig to the next? 
That mystery was quickly solved for me when I met our next guest a couple of years ago. He has spent over a decade traveling all over the UK on a trike with his tuba in tow, heading to schools, senior centers, and homes for the developmentally disabled, where he has created magic with his music. Bent Riders, today we visit Scotland to catch up with John Hopkin and the enterprise he calls Inner Tuba. <laughs> Hello, John. So thanks ever so much for having me on the show. I've got um, uh, a, a short amount of time, but I think just to show you some uh, a lot of slides, which I want to go through. So could we go to the slides, please? That would be absolutely great to see. Uh, that's my, my website. And on the front page of the website, it says uh, that basically it says that I love my the four T's in my life. We all have to have things that we love in life. And I love my tuba. I love my trailer, I love my tricycle, and I love traveling. And uh, that's what I love to do. Um, next slide, please. Uh, on this one, this is the very, very first picture, I think, that was taken of the rig just before I did a major tour 20 years ago. No, 19 years ago. And uh, this was before it was badged up. I had that trailer built by a chap called Bob Looney, and he, uh, he built it for me without touring and performing in mind it was purely just for me to take my tuba to rehearsals with bands and things and also to carry firewood and such like next slide please and that's when it was badged up for the first tour which was a thing called the year of the artist and that was the arts council of england who um had a had a major project inviting new people to do new projects and i had the opportunity next slide to tour right the way through the east midlands it got national coverage on the on the news and in the uh, in the broadcast media as well i think i'm the only tuba player to have played live on the bbc national Lu news at tower bridge in london um next uh, slide please that was my first gig uh, all people and uh, and the next uh, gig after that next slide please the next gig after that was um, more old people um, and uh, they were not the same old people as the first one because that was dark and I did quite a lot of miles on that tour. I was on the road for 21 days. I did uh, 1,173 miles I think um, and I did about 42 different shows in community venues all over the place and next slide please. It captures the imagination of children that's lovely and the next. Yeah. Now, at the end of that tour, you'll notice I was on a bicycle to begin with, and I decided after that, uh, after the success of that tour, I decided what I want to do is I want to cycle coast to coast across Canada. This was back in 2000, so I gave up the job and I, I, I got some temporary work, went back to my home in Lancaster in the northwest of England, where I was loaned this old Peter Ross trike, which belonged to some names that will be familiar with people in the UK, luminaries of the of the of the of the uh, recumbent world uh, a chap called john bradshaw and, and pat douglas owned this machine and they said you must get into recumbents and have a go with this one um they ran a lovely festival called cycle fest in lancaster which attracted people from all over the place uh, i was sold on the idea of trikes they were safer they were much more comfortable but this one did have its problems uh, traction on the back wheel was virtually non-existent when you came to any hill um the internal hub gears uh, seemed to manage when the, when they were in bottom gear starting on a hill they managed to dislodge the wheel no matter how tight you tighten the nuts and it didn't really stop very well but i wasn't deterred i was sold on recumbents as the way forward next slide please and that's a lovely shot of me going through lancaster town center back in 2003 and again change please now that underneath all of that rigging uh, the chap on the on the left of the picture is a chap called Bo Clown or Derek Carpenter, a professional clown, and beneath him is a Brox, one of the four-wheeled recumbent trikes, and it's towing um, two Carry Freedoms uh, trailers, the flat pack Carry Freedom trailers. And I got together with Derek, having met him at Cycle Fest, and he sort of wrote me into the whole business of, of professional clowning, if you like. So I owe him a, I owe him a, a favour, both 
to uh, you know in terms of honing uh, some performance skills and going outside of my comfort zone to do that, but also because uh, having got the bug for um, for recumbents, uh, I needed to get one, but I didn't really have the money. And he said, well, you can borrow, uh, next slide please, he said, you can borrow this Anthrotech. And that, that I, I cycled many miles on that Anthrotech. That had a schlumpf drive on the front, it had a three by seven, I had 42 uh, working gears. Um, you'll see that there, that the trailer is now on a chassis, which was also built by Derek. He's a builder and fabricator. He, built, he builds all his own props for, the, for his shows as well. And this is now a full suspension trailer, the suspension being provided by tennis balls, which are mounted in between the box and the chassis. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, that's another picture that was taken professionally, quite a nice shot. It's a bit scary, isn't it? I look as if I'm about to fly off into space. Uh, and again, another one. On to the next slide. Um, broadcast media um, has been of, it's been, it's been of interest to the press and media right the way through. So, and that was in Newcastle on Tyne in the Northeast. And next slide, please. John, can I hold you up for just a second? We have, uh, we have a uh, comment here from England. Yeah. You see that my problem living in Colne Lancashire Hills everywhere and getting the right trike, I'm having to build my own. Well, um, is this with or without a trailer? My, my, I, I, my personal take on that is that trikes are very, very good for hill climbing uh, because you don't have to maintain a minimum speed and because in, it, 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 with that in mind, you can then uh, you can put extremely low gears on because you don't have to worry about falling off at low speeds. Climb as slowly as, as you need to. Uh, exactly. But the problem, uh, and this, this will be seen, and the solutions to those problems will be seen as the slideshow goes on, and, and that is the, the back wheel of the trike which is your one drive wheel if it's got a big trailer and my trailer weight is usually about 75 kilograms give or take a bottle or three of water um, the problem is the traction of the back uh, with the uh, with the back wheel with trailer i have already okay i think i might be able to come to some solutions ab about this the 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 the, 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 the traction issue is the main one but and we'll get move. into this year as we'll we get, go we'll get into well, that. let's yeah. move yeah. along good yeah. okay uh, and the next slide that yeah just this one uh, children um are, are fantastic at imagining the whole thing. Now, that child who drew that picture will never ever have seen it from that vantage point. So he was looking at it from a from a helicopter view, and he wasn't in a helicopter. He was in a classroom. So there we go. The next slide, please. Um, now, here we go. Uh, this is the York Rally, I think, in two thousand and six, and you might uh, you might recognise the, those two luminaries uh, the, uh, that I'm sandwiched between, Neil Selwood and Chris Parker of what was then Badge Trice. And it was on that day that they decided that they had seen enough of me riding around on an Anthrotech and they, they, they were generously going to support Innertuber by providing a, uh, a trice as it was then. And this is, uh, next slide please. This is Chris Parker when I went down to Falmouth, when there was only about three or four of them working for them at that time. I think they've got Ben, I think they've got John there, the Canadian chap, and, and Neil and, and Chris, and I don't think Hero was even on board at that point, uh, 2006, and there we are um, uh, sorting out the, the gearing on that lovely Trice Mini. And it's just uh, been an absolute fantastic workhorse. Um, next, uh, next slide, please. And that gives you some ideas. That was very, very soon after I got the got the trike, and that's on the Western Isles. There's a strand of islands across the northwest uh, side of, of of Scotland, quite remote. And I got the opportunity to do a tour of about 19 primary schools. Some of them very small. You know, some 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 of those schools have got as few as well. The, the smallest one at the time had four pupils. Um, but uh, yeah, so the idea was that I was going to cycle the the entire length of the west and I was doing shows mostly in primary schools. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, that's an example of, of, of what I was doing in the primary schools there. But uh, catastrophe struck. Uh, the benefit of putting the trike on a chassis was that it was stronger. The, uh, sorry, the trailer on a chassis was that it was stronger. The benefit of having the suspension was that it, it, was, it protected its, its, its gubbins. But it did raise the center of gravity, and it raised it to a point that wasn't particularly helpful. And I don't have a photograph of it, but I was descending uh, a very big, famous hill called the Cletium. 
um, which is in the Isle of Harris. And um, and this massive, massive, massive gust of wind came in from the Atlantic and it just blew the trailer over and everything was all over the road. It was just like the pant my pants were everywhere. The trailer, the tuba rolled down a hill and it was just game over because the whole thing was 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 uh, was trashed. Now, safety, had I been on a bicycle, I would have been taken with it. I would have been thrown off. But I could I just looked behind me and I said, oh, looks like the trailer's gone over. Uh, and because I was on three wheel stable, uh, I was I was fine. And this is one of the big advantages of it. Next slide. Were please. those the words that you used when it went over? Uh, John? I said, "Oh dear, yes. Oh yes. dear, I'm not going to make my next uh, my next uh, gig, at, which was actually incidentally it was it was at Clear Small Primary School, which is the, the school with the four kids. And I had to ring up ring ahead and say, look, I just can't make it because I've I've crashed. And so I had to go away with my with my tail between my legs. And they said, right, well, reconvene put it all back together take your bits and pieces and your giblets home and then we'll 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 continue the tour later in the year so it was um next slide please it was uh, oh that's just another slide that i just put in just to give you an idea of of the sorts of things that was actually in northern ireland that was just outside belfast uh but i thought that just shows a picture of how things are sometimes in schools and next slide please and this is now in 2007. Look at the new trailer that was made by Bob Looney. It's the same chassis again. It's a similar kind of suspension using the tennis balls. It's got a much, much, much lower slung uh, center of gravity because there's a, it's, it's a bit like a, a, a pit that goes in between the two wheels. And, the, and right the way across the bottom of that is a is a uh, it's a bit like a sump on a car and the ground clearance was about four inches and it gave much much more capacity but it was a bit heavy built again by a fantastic sheet metal worker bob looney who was a um, lovely guy and always been supportive of what i do and uh, next slide please that's uh that's uh it about 800 miles away and I'd cycled all the way between the two. The, the first slide was in um, southeast England, in Kent, where you were last year, Gary, I think, weren't you? Uh, yes, I was. You were yes, down I in was. Kent. and uh, We were Mark at the World, yeah, at the World Championships, beautiful area. That's right, yeah. And so I was down in Margate and Ramsgate and all down there, where they talk like that. And then I went through central London. I did some shows up John, in John, that sounds exactly the same to me. Did you just change an accent? Oh, I, I did, I did. I talk like they do down <laughs> London, you see? <laughs> You didn't hear it, did you? Uh, anyway, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> so then I, then I went, I, I cycled, and this shot is the same thing in the Western Isles. And again, what a terrible, terrible, terrible weather. And that was in the summer. That was just awful. The, it's a it's a very, very bleak and barren place. I'm. It's a bit like I would imagine um, Newfoundland to be. Uh, but we'll see. Okay, so uh, on, to the, on to the next slide. I got a, a, some... some uh, uh, viewers will recognize Velovision and dear Peter Eland, whose brainchild it was to have that magazine. And he was the man for alternatives in bikes for a long time. And he had a lovely following. He's a lovely, lovely man. And he gave me the opportunity to put a uh, a piece in Velovision. And in that, I put in the article that's in there, I put that I, I wanted to do big tours. I wanted to to do a, a, a substantial overseas tour at some point, but uh, that was that was to come. I was just minded that I wanted to do that. Next slide, please. And then we come to reasons for stopping doing um, inner tuba touring. Um, I, I, I met this lovely lady, Karen, in, in the Western Isles. And apart from being a, a um, uh, a musician. I'm also, or oh, have been, an occupational therapist, and I got the chance to, to 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 meet Karen, who was also an occupational therapist, and that sort of gave me the incentive to look to see how I could continue to stay there to spend more time with her. And so I got a permanent full-time job as an occupational therapist in the Western Isles, and we spent three very very happy years um together and she knew that i wanted to uh, ride coast to coast across canada that was important to her as well because she was canadian and um we were all set at some point in the future when our careers have been developed a little bit more to 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 support me in doing that and then uh lives change for people and tragedy struck and next slide please um and karen uh, she died in 2012. She died very suddenly in a in a terrible car crash, and uh, uh, the the whole of my life has changed dramatically since that time. Um, and I just want to play a little bit of a tune in memory of dear Karen. Oh. 
Beautiful tribute, John. Beautiful <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I, I don't want to dwell too much on Karen because she was a private person and she didn't ever want to be the centre of attention, but she was a fantastic occupational therapist who worked, her work specialised with, with children and young people with quite complex needs. And a huge influence on you to this day. Oh, oh so ab it's absolutely. important that you do that. Okay. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, but I'm not going to dwell on her, but what I will say at this point is that I, I have struggled because so, I know that people come on this show and they, they share a little bit about themselves. And I want, I want to do that just very briefly. And that is until very, very, very recently, I struggled with the idea of still being in grief and feeling terrible loss um, at, at not having Karen in my daily life as a living person. But she is in my life as, 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 as a person. And I think she will be for the rest Rest of my life and she's she will always be there and I, I was struggling with trying to reconcile the idea of carrying that terrible sadness and thinking well I've got to get that in a box I've got to have closure I've got to have this idea of closure and then I'll be able to move on and do the things that I want to do which is ultimately a coast-to-coast -coast ride across the country where she was born Canada um, and, and, I, and I thought I can only do that when I've cleared up that bit and put it in a box and I now know and this might be useful to other people because we all grieve that, that grief is going to be a lifelong thing for me and it will just stay with me the whole time. But that's not at the expense of having great joy and happiness. Um, so you found that it was you, know, you found that it was not about putting it in a box. You found that, that it was more about learning to live with this. Absolutely, and the, it's, the, there's, a, there's currently an idea that, uh, for from the standpoint of lawyers and in in, in the in the in the judiciary and so on, there's this big thing about putting closure on things, and it's a word that everybody uses, and it's now being brought into question as to whether it's a helpful thing for for everybody. For some people, mm -hmm. it's useful. For me, I don't think it is. Um, and now I'm happy with the idea that the two things in great joy, happiness, thoroughly good times can live um, side by side with, with um, every, every day thinking about that terrible event and the, the, the tragic loss. The yes. two can and do live side by side and, and it would be uh, a wrong thing to, to, to not let that happen. You yes. Know? I yeah. agree. All okay. right, shall we move so, along then? Yeah, That's absolutely. A, yeah, a yeah. great part of the story. So, Go ahead. So uh, I was now absolutely more fueled with the idea of I want to ride coast to coast across Canada because not only had I got the original idea of doing so, but I also wanted to do it in memory of, uh, of our Canadian friend, um, Karen. So we started uh, lighter weight. So the idea was lighter weight um, uh, trailer so that we could do that. And this is made out of plywood and it's made by my friend Bob Deegan, who, next slide please. Yeah, that's Bob. And then, uh, and then I put the next slide up, please. Bob's in Lancaster, and he makes harpsichords for a living. The point I'm making is that whilst Inner Tuba is, is a solo show, ultimately, it's an absolute combination of skills from all sorts of people, from all sorts of walks of life. And dear Robert, at the time when I was in a terrible state, really, he was one of a number of people who gave me lots of support and practical support and, and helped me with his list. Next slide, please. As did Colin Stones. Colin Stones is a bike mechanic in Lancaster, and he's carrying, does anybody know what that is? Do you see what he's looking through? I have no idea. Okay, next slide. It's a, a, it's a type of hitch, and it's the hitch from a Carry Freedom trailer, and it's made out of a sort of neoprene rubber, and it, it will flex in every direction, and it's a fantastic idea. It's the invention of Nick Lobnitz, who is of, of, of Carry Freedom trailers. Next slide, please. And that's with that hitch ready to go with the new light rate trailer and some publicity shots. I, I, I thought about putting a canvas inner at that point to reduce the weight. And all the time I was thinking these are, are, are preparations for getting the thing right for going across Canada. Next, next slide. And that this uh, pe uh, UK people will know that that's the Eric Morecambe statue. He was one of Morecambe and Wise. 
uh, UK comedians, and that statue is of Eric Morecambe, and that's a lovely, joyful shot for anybody who knows um, Eric Morecambe. Uh, rest in peace. Next, uh, next, next slide, please. And that's me doing my my bit. More joyful kids, joy, um, working alongside great sadness. And next slide, please. Um, yeah. Now this is where we go into the musical side of things because what I also wanted to do, as well as making a cycling tribute, was to make a musical tribute as well. And I wanted to develop the whole thing. And up until this point, I'd only done performances as a soloist um, uh, without without accompaniment from anybody else. And I took the the, the, the chance to uh, to en engage some arrangers and composers to write things for brass band and wind band and so on. And this piece, um, this chap here is one of my childhood idols talking of great happiness that that shot is of a chap called john iveson who was one of the uh, brass players on the uk circuit and the world circuit he was a founder member of the philip jones brass ensemble and i had the opportunity to work with him he arranged a case of you a Joni mitchell tune and that's a photograph of its first performance great 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 privilege i couldn't believe it when uh, i i got to be uh, to spend some quite intimate time with john he was a love he's a lovely man and i'm really looking forward to having the chance to play this music again whenever the opportunity arises alongside next slide please Franna, Franna Otter, PhD in brass band composition skills, Dr. Franna Otter, and she wrote, if you next slide please, uh, Tuba Odyssey, The Journey of Inner Tuba, and that was a, a piece that she's written for solo tuba and brass band. So again, it would be great to get it played by me um, as part of my tours. Uh, next slide please. Now, um, traction, trailer, trailer back wheels, skidding, and so on. Uh, this is the uh, a new frame that was being built by Colin, the chap who was showing you the, the, the lollipop through his eye. Um, and the, this, uh, at the very, very, very top uh, left-hand corner, you'll see a black piece of rubber, and that, that and, and, and inserted into the end of the square section tube. And that is a heavy-duty sort of neoprene lollipop type thing. It's difficult to see in that photograph, but that's the new hitch point. And Nick Lovnitz suggested, of Carry Freedom, he suggested that in order to overcome this business of traction, what you've then got, what you've got to do is you've got to put a certain amount of weight over the back wheel. And so that's what we did. And if you look to the next slide, that and so therefore you have to have a corresponding piece that that hitch point will go into so you need to make a complete new rack um colin was bike mechanic he was at that time he was a bit of a novice at welding and and, and wasn't experienced but he had a go and he did a fantastic job of that and so next slide please and this is this is uh working the whole thing out so you can see that the wheels are right at the back you can see that the hitch point is directly well you can't see but it's directly over the hub and so all of the weight is bearing down on the back wheel and when you go up a one in four hill or a 25 percent hill even in the wet you don't lose traction and it's uh, that 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 was that was the thing. So it's a bit like a wheelbarrow with the wheels at the thing, and then and then you know that's where a, a, a person would be carrying it. Next slide, please. So that was the, the 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 finished item ready to go touring. You can see the the hitch point. You can see the wheels at the back, and you can see how the whole of the weight of that would bear down on the back wheel. Next slide. And some gorgeous young ladies who happened to be training on that circuit, and we said, "Can we take some photographs with you, please? Because that will brighten the whole thing up." Great joy, and I, I kept in touch with some of those afterwards. Uh, a women's road racing team, and they were fed up with being—I uh, don't know what's the word—they they, they felt a bit intimidated by by the men's cycling groups, and they put them together themselves. And it's a great charity, and they do some good work. Next slide, please. Um, R remoteness that's part of what inner tube is all about you'll see that it's all of a sudden it's turned white the reason it turned white was because the the canvas cover idea uh didn't work because it leaked like a sieve and so we put some plastic insert into it to do that and this is me going um on a tour this is in scotland and the remoteness of some of the places that you go to is well we all know what it's like to be in the middle of nowhere but the contrast for in a tuba between all of a sudden being in the middle of a hall full of school kids and being completely on your own self-reliant is is one of the things i enjoy about it next slide please 
Yep, that's it. Um, a good example of camping in the middle of nowhere. And um, next slide. This is me arriving in Fort William, which is um, it is in the middle of Scotland. I was pretty tired, but I was made welcome by next slide, please. Made welcome uh, as as a soloist in the Loch Arbor Community Wind Band. Um, next slide. And this chap here, oh crikey, I can't just remember his name offhand, but uh, I do know him incredibly well. Um, very very good tuba player. His house, that's the back garden of his house and um his name will come to me in a minute sorry about that and um uh, as you open the back door you overlook the highest mountain in the uk ben nevis uh, and that's in his back garden um when you take two tubers and you play two tubers at ben nevis it makes a colossal sound i can tell you it's really marvelous um, i highly recommend it get your tubers out and go and blow them at ben nevis next slide please press and publicity this was on a, a tour in um this was in murray which is on the east coast i'd come skirted around the top of scotland and i come down to the east coast and i did some some shows there uh which were funded by again pat pat douglas who 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 was right from the very beginning of the thing when 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 i first got the peter ross trike she was involved with that she was now working as a cycling promotion officer in murray and she organized a tour of about 30 primary schools for me to do and that was the press coverage of that next slide um, and funny things happen. Next slide. And you some, sometimes come across a tuba player who's also a cyclist and you've got to give them the show. Why not have a rest? Next slide. Just to give you a flavor of the sorts of things that happen. Andrew Harrington, he turned up to, do, to see a show of mine over in Murray. He drove up from Aberdeen with his quest. And he, he, he and I, I don't see him that often, probably, probably every two or three years. But, um, but he, he always follows in the tuba and he's an extremely nice bloke. So if ever you're in Aberdeen and you want to get together with somebody who's got, a, um, got one of these uh, Vela Mobile type things and you want to see him, he, I'm sure he'll put you up. Okay, next slide, please uh special needs a special needs children has more meaning to me now than ever it did before because of the memory of karen of course um gigs are not all about um you know uh, bums on seats and having 500 people in an audience next slide it can be you know just um you don't know necessarily as 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 the performer in these situations what impact this is having on profoundly disabled people like this chap but the the carers and support workers will very often say the stimulation that you gave to that child we've never seen a reaction like that and you're talking about people whose capacity to express themselves is often really really very small and it's it's, it's a very rewarding thing to have the opportunity to do next slide please and this chap, he reached out and he was very animated in a way that brought great joy to both me and him and the staff. Next slide, please. So now we come to um, the problem with the last trailer was that the wheels were too far back. <laughs> and um, the, the, the weight that was, which was bearing on the back wheel was just too much. So um, uh, it had to be back to the drawing board because what was happening, it was wearing out tires, rear tires on the Trice Mini like butter, and it was wearing out drive chains like butter, and the whole thing was very difficult to maneuver about with the wheels at the back. And we thought, right, well, we've nearly got it, but we need to get the wheel, we need to get the wheels forward. So off we went with uh, Steve Foster from uh, the North of Scotland engineer. Built this next slide, please. This, that's the that's the componentry that we used for for the chassis that he designed and we built together and the next slide please and that was the frame the chassis frame finished so you can see how that how that works and the little piece at the front there is actually a brake mechanism framework for it as well uh Sturmy archer drum brakes on the trailer there on the on the 355 wheels there next slide please how are we doing for time gary Oh, we are getting along okay. Um, let's, yeah. If we can keep it moving along, yeah. that would be yeah. great. Okay. But I want you to tell your story, John. That's Go ahead. Finished, that's, that's the finished item, okay, with, with, with it ready to roll. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to test the, uh, the, the trailer, and I wanted to test my abilities, and I wanted to get some performances in. And so next slide, please. Dunnet Head is the northernmost point of mainland Britain. It's about 13 miles away from where I'm sitting now. Next slide. 
And my journey was going to take me from Dunnett Head or John O'Groats. John O'Groats is, is, is nominally the, the northernmost point, but it's actually Dunnett Head. And I wanted to go from Dunnett Head all the way down to um, Lizard Point, which is the southernmost point of mainland Britain. I also went to Land's End, which is the southwesternmost point of mainland Britain. Here's a few pictures of me on the way. That's me about to set off. And next slide. And that's me camping in the snow. It was cold in April. And the next slide, please. Uh, an example of it, it warmed up. This was in the Cairn Gorms, a lovely school in the middle of nowhere. Next slide, please. Camping away from the middle of nowhere. Weather was better again. Uh, I use the National Cycle Networks. If you come to the UK, the National Cycle Network is getting more uh, comprehensive and it's getting easier, even for trikes and trailers, uh, to, 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 to negotiate. You don't come across barriers that will preclude you from getting on as much as you used to. And the whole, the whole of that sort of infrastructure of cycling tracks is it's not as advanced as other countries. Oh, that's Dave. Um, and he's of laid back bikes in Edinburgh. Nice chap. Um, He's, uh, he's he's beating the drum there, and he put me up and uh, gave me accommodation down in Edinburgh. Big, big, uh, big uh, uh, support for for Dave Gardner of Laidback Bikes in Edinburgh. Okay, uh, things got muddy. Yeah, next slide. Joyfulness. That was the highest. That that is the brass band, which is at the highest elevation in the UK, a place called Lead Hills. And look at that lovely crowd of people. We had a great time, and they put me up for a few days, and we had a super time. Next slide. And as Paul, Paul there, he, I met him there, and that was his kind of response to the joy of the occasion. Not bad, eh? Okay, onward. And um, I got further south. This was down near Bristol, southwest, and I got the opportunity to become involved in a major, major brass festival, the Festival of Brass, and I met this chap. This, it, on the newspaper photograph, there's a chap there with a bass trombone, and he's been incredibly supportive of, of Inner Tuba. He's a fantastically talented bass trombonist. He plays with Welsh National Opera. I think he's on trial with the London Philharmonic Orchestra at the moment, and we did some shows together in schools, and he's become a lifelong friend of mine now and, uh, and what a, what a fantastic opportunity to get the chance to play with him and his team of people down there who organized the festival next slide so you get the idea yeah that was at the festival um all, all of these children here and young people oh yeah uh, a couple of plastic trombones sorry yeah let's let's move forward again you got Yes, it. Uh, I had no idea that that photograph was going to be taken. In uh, uh, I, I knew that those two chaps played the trombone, but I didn't know that they were also unicyclists, and I didn't know that they could actually play their plastic trombones as Let's they were Let's hold on that picture too, John. I have an interesting comment that goes just with this. Uh, that's not it. Wait. Uh, sorry, I just moved up. There we go. Oh, brilliant. Okay, and, Kevin. And <laughs> Kevin, yeah. So Kevin talks about the trombone trailer he made, and he has a second. There, he has an invitation for you. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That would be fantastic. I'd love to. I'd love to come across there. Yes, there's a, a, a trike riding uh, colleague uh, also there. Yeah, Brad and Trey, and Trey, one of the one of the guys who's organising the uh, the technical side of tonight's show is a is a, a trumpet player and a piccolo trumpet player. And just yesterday, we were talking about how we could get a recumbent um, brass quintet together. So we've now got we've now recruited our, our trombone players. Is that from... true, Trey? Yeah, there oh, you yeah, are. yeah. We're gonna take this yeah. show on the road, man. Yeah, so we've <laughs> got to get we've got to get a trump we've got the trombone player now. All we're looking for now is another trumpet and you we think you've got a horn player as well, don't you? Yes, Trey. yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So we'll we'll be going across to Oregon at some point. All so. right, let's get <laughs> Okay, next slide, please. To... Sorry. Yeah. I think uh... go ahead, Denny. I'm sorry, that's my fault. Okay, so that's that's me having got all the way. That's that's uh, uh, Land's End, I think. That photographs at Land's End. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and that's at Lizard Point, the southernmost point of mainland Britain. And the next slide, please. Now, look at that. Uh, Lizard Point is actually not that far away from ice strikes. 
So I turned up to ice strikes, having not seen them in their uh, on their own home turf since 2006. And I turned up there with the Trice Mini, having done all those miles in between. And, uh, and, and, and they all came out and said, my goodness me, you've just ridden that machine. You've ridden that. Look at this, this Trice Mini. You've done that. I said, yeah, it's done thousands of miles. It's incredibly strong. It's a real workhorse. And, and they made me extremely welcome. And they were very enthusiastic about the whole thing. And um, they said, well, you've better come back when when uh, when we've brought out a new adventure because we think that you might be find that useful so that 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 machine there is the uh, oh beg your pardon uh, chris parker he built this fantastic uh, rack whereby you can put the um th this lovely you know the top bag on there and you can also mount it through the same absolute precision bespoke thing you can mount it on the trailer mount as well and the advantage of having the um having having the possibility to put the panniers on the racks here is that if you're traveling over very very heavy terrain you can bias the weight of your stuff onto the trike so that the back wheel is much much more weighted down but if you're going over more gentle terrain you put the all of your stuff in the trailer which has got enough ullage to give you, you to to, to uh, hold it all and then that doesn't wear out your transmission and wear out your rear tire so that with all of that and there's an example of it with 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 the, all of the gubbins in the trailer it's big enough to, to hold that so you can have it you can distribute the weight according to the terrain and the road conditions which is handy as well and it also you you can you can lock it all up in the trailer if you're going through cities and you don't want people to be prodding and poking around and taking stuff out of your panniers it's a fantastic uh, chris put an awful lot of time into thinking this through yes next please um i only put that one in for in terms of road safety i i, I i'm a terrible car passenger now and that's a uh, that's a legacy of of um you know, dear karen's death but for some reason or other and i'm incredibly lucky i've i've got no problem with riding the trike and i still love riding it in traffic i enjoy the rough and tumble of of city traffic but what i have learned is that if you've got a trailer don't put the logos on the back of it don't put the words on the back because they're too small and people will drive up close behind you simply to read what you what, what you've got on the trailer and since i've taken off all the logos off the back the traffic is uh, it doesn't behave in that way so i think that's a bit of a tip for, for people it's a bit of a shame because it is a it is a bit of a waste of a promotion space but that's it's for that reason uh next slide Uh, and that's me uh, playing uh, with the Loch Arbor Community Wind Band and Friends. And you'll see that there's Fran Arotta playing the euphonium in the middle, Dr. Fran Arotta. And there we're playing for the first time the concert or the wind band arrangement of her tuba Odyssey. She wrote it for British Style Brass Band and then she rearranged it for wind band because I said, listen, in North America and Canada, there's, there's high school bands all over the place and the wind band or the concert band is much more common than the brass band if we're going to get this thing played frana why don't you do that and generously again she did and so that opens up opportunities again we hope yeah that's it next slide uh the, the, touring with the new trike an old people's home don't forget it's not the numbers game it's the quality there was a fantastic old people's home it was actually a day center lorandi day center and the quality of care there was fantastic the staff were lovely the people there were very engaged it's just what i do and the, the, the whole story is about not only the music but also the travels on the road and so on and very often you'll find when you when you when you go to an older people's day center that amongst them have been some musicians or are musicians and amongst them are people who have got you know some quite quite interesting cycling stories as well so it's uh, it's a good uh, it's a good thing yeah and next yeah, uh, lo lovely, lovely local charity that I support here in Thurso and Wick, the other town in Caithness, which is the Caithness Mental Health Support Group. Um, I went and did a, a performance with them. They're, they're, I'm, uh, they were happy to have their picture taken. Fantastic little charity, does great work. And basically just by being there, saves lives. It's a lovely place. Okay, yeah. Oh, who are they? 
I don't know. But, uh, we're going to get on to this. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what what the plans are for the future for uh, yeah. for Inner Cuba yeah. now, John. Yeah. So let's let's wrap it up. We can do another five minutes or so, okay. and uh, yeah. let's tell the story because this is very exciting. Yeah. Okay. So that guy in the middle of that photograph there was a chap called Gary J. Solomon, who you might know. He runs a thing called the Laid Back Bite Report, which is fantastic. He does an awful lot of work with it. Um, and the guy to his left is Dave Hendricks, who runs Connecticut Yankee Peddler which is a major retailer in in the west of Iowa. Actually, John, he's to my right, if, if I'm not mistaken. I beg your pardon. To, to, so so to we the people all know who that is, yep. <laughs> to the left of the picture. And the guy on the uh, on, on the right of the picture is is Chris Parker of Ice Strikes. And so they were having a bit of a bit of a chinwag about how they might be able to support Inatuba coming to America, which is what's happening in July. Uh, and the major sponsor for my, my trip to uh, America is Dave Hendricks of Connecticut Yankee Peddler. I've never met the man, but I think he's absolutely fantastic. And I'm delighted to, to have, a, have a connection with him. Look at that shop. Isn't that great? And what he says is that most of the people who go to his shop uh, travel between three and five hours to get there. Uh, the reason that they come is because he's carrying about 10 brands and they've got the expertise to be able to advise people on what they need and they've got a lot of stuff in stock. Um, and he's made, and, and he, he, he lives in a town called Chariton, the shop's in Chariton, and I'm looking forward to going there because there's about 4,000 people there. Uh, it's a very rural area and he seems to have, it seems to have managed to, to have created this amazing uh, business there um, with people coming from miles around you know there's a thousand miles people come to, to to see it so you're going to see that as well aren't you gary i am indeed uh, yes. we are going i'm going to talk about this more at the end of the show john but yes uh, the layback back report is going to go out to uh, iowa as well talk uh, john go ahead and, and tell tell the folks about what you're going to do uh, out there and when this is going to be yeah, and then yeah. I'll, I'll talk about uh, our coverage of you then yeah just a, a, a heads up to, to lee stofer this is a chap who who he he makes tubers he makes tubers and he's a repairer in the eastern side of, of iowa and he's going to receive my tuber i'm going to ship it in advance and he's going to open the box and if it's damaged he's going to he's going to do bits and pieces to repair it so thanks to lee for that yeah yeah and next slide and i'm going to do ragbri which i had never heard of and I, the first time I'd heard about Ragbri was from Professor John Manning, who's a professor of tuba at, um, the, at uh, Iowa State University. Uh, and he said, he, he, he mentioned Ragbri when he contacted me about the idea of doing some work over with him. And so thanks to John Manning for putting me in touch with it, because it's one of, one of America's cycling best kept secrets, I think. Um, it's amazing. And, uh, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity. It's a challenge. It's going to be a long, uh, long journey, but I'm going to be riding Ragbri and I'm going to be doing shows on the way. That's the route this year. I am going to be um, jointly sharing a stall at the um, Iowa Bike Expo on the 20th, uh, or is it the 19th? I think it's the day before it starts. There's a big thing in Council Bluffs the, night, the day before, and then I'm going to be riding the route with everybody else doing shows. How about that? Yeah. Remarkable. Uh, we're looking towards uh, oh yeah just well let's let's go ahead back to the rag buy real quickly because yeah. we need to, to uh I, we want to talk about uh, what else it's not just you're not just coming here to do rag buy john no what, what, i'm going to tell, be, tell the be, folks what the tour is going to be about well the, the the whole thing is i'm going to i'm going to be touring for i don't I, the, the the full itinerary isn't yet determined and i haven't yet found um a charity partner although i know i, I know who, who who i want i'm not going to go public with that but broadly i want to be raising money in iowa for children and young people with special needs and that's a throwback to to dear karen and 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 keeping her memory alive in a very positive way so i'm hoping to be able to go public with with um being able to uh, people pony up to 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 uh, to support that right john, um, and and to, to let folks know to be clear here so john is doing ragbri as he said but he will yeah. be we haven't determined all the details he will be in iowa for quite a number of weeks yeah, I'll, be, I'll be there for six for about five or six weeks and, yes. and so tell the folks what you plan what your general plans are for that the, the general plan is uh, aside from the concentrated mileage of iowa i want to i want to go to every single nook and cranny in 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 the state um and i want to be doing performances it's during the during the school holidays i want 
want to be doing performances at, 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 at summer camps and I want to be doing performances at old people's homes. I want to try and see if I can to make contact with some community wind bands and concert bands. There are a couple of British style brass bands which I want to try and make contact with. Um, one is the East of Iowa brass band and the other one is just over the border in Omaha is the Nebraska British style brass band. And so I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get some solo opportunities with the bands or at least sitting on a rehearsal with them as well. So, so yeah, so we'll we'll keep it, uh, the folks updated yeah, on that, of course, yeah. and we'll be continuing to follow you. And yes, the Layback Back Report is going to be there. We'll, we're going to spend maybe yes. a week or so covering uh, John's Rag Bride, maybe the beginning of that, and maybe uh, a few of the days that he's out riding around to some of the other uh, places that he will uh, stop and perform as well. So we're, we're going to uh, see if we can uh, make a nice video and, and show the folks what you do here in the States uh, this summer. So let's uh, let's wrap it up if we can, uh, John. Let's see. Uh, you want to see those last slides real quickly? Um, yeah, just just if ever if ever any of you happen to yeah. be in, in the UK, I'm sitting in this room right now. This is a one room that, that, that you're seeing virtually the whole thing. It's a little studio flat, uh, which I run as an Airbnb. Um, and so you can come stay in the Airbnb, or I've got another tiny little house just down the road, which is that one, which I'm renovating at the moment. Um, and this is in Thurzo Town Centre. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, that was the night that I had five warm showers guests in there. And that was all good fun. So if you're into warm showers, you can come and take potluck and see what see what you've got. But it's a good place to come with your recumbent trike. It's a, it's a, it's good touring, good visibility. It's not big hedgerows and so on. So do come do come and come and stay. That's the state of the renovation at the moment. So I've got to get that ready for occupation before by somebody who's going to run the Airbnb for me whilst I'm away. So I'm busy doing that as well. And um, I think that that's about. Oh yeah, that's it. That now that that frame there. That's me. I've got a lock up to. Just up the road and uh, that's me bringing the toilet back from the lockup but well when I took and dug out the floor the toilet came out uh, as did everything else and that was me putting it back and that frame is the one that goes back to the first uh, the, the one that Bo Clown Derek the Clown Derek Carpenter made and the, and the frame still being used with the red lollipop and so all of these things are still being used so and um, so I will have a flushing toilet as well by the time you come back Yes, but not on the, Iowa, not on the trailer in Iowa. Not on the trailer in Iowa. All right, is that to, the last? Have... Uh, is that the last slide? Uh, no, what? so long. That's just just. Uh, I, I'm going to put this. I'm going to have some recordings up on on my website. I haven't got it up yet, but it's so long. It was written by this chap here. Uh, I think there's a slide of oh, uh, yeah, Willie Gilmore, another composer, and he just uh, I just went to his recording studio once, and he'd written that without me asking, and we all know why he wrote a a, a beautiful piece called So Long. And, all right, um, and yeah, I so, think so, so gonna, long, so, yeah, so let's, long. <laughs> let's go ahead and end it on that, John. I, before you, uh, you're going to play us out. I think you play your section out. Well, I think uh, I think the people who are supporting this uh, this uh, uh, Ragbri and the and the Iowa tour deserve to have a bit of um. Let's hear. <laughs> There we go. John, I, I, just, I just want to say before you go, I hope that offer was genuine about the Airbnb because I'm half Scottish and I absolutely need to go there. That's yeah, Brian, yeah, John. Ab absolutely, but I would recommend that you come on the warm shells thing. You know, we 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 don't. Oh yeah, yeah. Want, yeah. We don't want to charge people for coming who who have been watching laid back bike report. We don't want to yeah. do that. <laughs> <laughs> that <would be> cool. <laughs> All right, sure. and uh, here one last uh, comment uh, for you, John. Uh, Good stuff, John. Too. If you're ever in the neighborhood, there's a spare room and a brew. Saves you freezing in a tent, thank, fella. Thank you by so Mark much. Donnie McLeod. Um, whereabouts is he? He was the one that uh, was having trouble in the hills. Uh, oh, was it Lancashire? Cole. He's, he's the guy in Colm, isn't he? Yes. 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 He, so he, that you know where that is. Yeah, I know. All right, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna go ahead and call it a, 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 an interview at, at that. John, do you have any? I final can't thoughts? wait to hear. I can't wait to hear what Carl's got to say. And thanks for your patience, Kyle. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Kyle's Kyle's still with us right now. Absolutely. No, I love your story. Thank you so That's much. Yeah. John, yeah. thank you. Uh, uh you're you're a good friend. We've been together working on this uh this day for uh, quite a few years we already. Have. So I'm so glad to finally have you on to have uh, folks uh, hear your story, which I think is so important. So thank John you so much. Yeah, John Hodkin, thank you so much for being on the layback bike report. Yeah, bless you all. Thank you.
Thanks, John. Right, folks, we are moving along. So I think it's time to, uh, to bring uh, our next guest on. Let me introduce him uh, for you, if I could. Overcoming adversity is something we all admire. It is something every one of us has dealt with at some point in our life. My next guest began encountering major progressive health issues as a child and early on challenged himself to fight back and help others do the same. He headed a movement, he did a TED talk, he made a movie, and he wrote a book all in the service of this cause. Folks, I am very honored today to have the ataxian Kyle Bryant on the Laid Back Bike Report. Kyle, welcome aboard. All right. Thanks so much for having me, Gary. I really appreciate it. I appreciate being able to tell my story because, um, you know, that's what it's all about. I'll, I'll, uh, all of us learning from each other as we tell our stories and live our lives the best way we can. So thank you. You're welcome, my friend. We're glad to have you on. So uh, Kyle's going to basically do a presentation. He has uh, his story to tell. I think you all, for the few of you who may be watching who don't know about <laughs> Kyle, he is going to explain it to you. But even those who know Kyle and have followed his story and seen the movie, I think you're going to be very excited to, to hear what he's got to say. And uh, Kyle, why don't you go ahead with that presentation? We're all listening. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to tell my story in hopes that it might resonate with others. You know, it's, it's, um, it's centered around my trike. The place I love to be the most where I'm most joyful is on my trike and joyful and optimistic. And, um, so, so, uh, when I was young, I drifted along like all happy kids. And I was genuinely happy. I had a loving family, lots of friends, and plenty of sports and activities to keep me busy. It seemed like nothing was standing in the way of my perfect low-key life. Breeze through school, low stress work, retirement age 65, 72, maybe. Um Right. I think I think all of you out there that are listening to this have that same thought. Well, at age 17, I was diagnosed with Friedrich's ataxia. Friedrich's ataxia. What the heck is that? I could hardly pronounce it, let alone know what it was going to mean for me and my family for the rest of our lives. Well, over the next few years, my family and I found out that Friedrich's ataxia is a rare neuromuscular disease that affects all muscle coordination from the toes to the fingertips. We found out that it would only be a matter of time before I'm in a wheelchair. It would only be a matter of time before I lose all ability to take care of myself. And it would only be a matter of time before my heart fails and I suffer a premature death. And I don't know about you, but in my book, it's kind of a bummer, right? To make matters worse, there's no treatment, no cure, and at that time, very little hope. And I was 17. 17 is the pinnacle of optimism. Your whole life is in front of you. And I found out that it was downhill from there on out. So I lived with those facts for a few years. I graduated high school. I went to college at UC Davis in California. I got a degree in civil engineering and I got a good job at an engineering firm in Sacramento, where I lived at the time. All the while, I was losing the ability to perform in sports I love. Sports like baseball, basketball, golf, and skiing. Well, when it came time for me to give up my upright bicycle, I put my foot down. I said, that's enough. That's enough of losing all these sports and activities that means so much to me. And I found a way to keep riding. 
I found a recumbent tricycle. And my first thought was, tricycle? That's kind of lame. Tricycles are for clowns and little kids. But I was up against this roadblock, this situation that life had thrown my way. And this was my opportunity to react. So I went for a test ride. Next slide. And as I was rolling around in the parking lot, I absolutely fell in love with this new machine. It's a feeling I hadn't had in years. And I started riding. My first ride was seven miles. Seven miles. I was so proud of myself. I had no idea I had that in me. I had no idea that anyone had even ridden seven miles on a bike or a trike before. My next ride was 14 miles, then 25, then 50, then only four months after my very first ride, I went for a century ride. A hundred miles in a day, what was I thinking? Well, once again, I was up against this roadblock. This situation that life had thrown my way, and this was my opportunity to react. Well, I was the last one on the road that day. All the other cyclists had finished their ride, packed up their bikes, and were driving home by the time I crossed the finish line. But I'd done it! A hundred miles in a day! Are you kidding me? I can't even walk down the street and I just rode 100 miles in a day. From then on, the sky was the limit. I started thinking huge. I decided that I wanted to ride my trike to the meeting of the National Ataxia Foundation. It was a meeting with a bunch of people just like me that have ataxia. Well, that year, the meeting was in Memphis, Tennessee. And at that time, I lived in California. What a crazy idea. But once again, I was up against this roadblock, this situation that life had thrown my way, and this was my opportunity to react. So on January 22nd, 2007, my dad and I left from San Diego, California. We were going to ride our bikes to Memphis, Tennessee. 2,500 miles and 59 days later, we rode by Graceland. We rode our bikes to Elvis's house. Talk about all shook up. We couldn't believe what we'd done. And during that trip, I wrote a blog post about every three days and I started getting all these comments and emails from people who were telling me how my actions were helping them in their lives. And I started to realize that this isn't more than just about me. It's not about me anymore. It's about how I fit into the community and how I can help serve others and bring us all to the finish line together. So to expand the reach and um, to go a little bigger, I put together a team for Race Cross America and you can put up the next slide. So um, most of you know, anyone who's listening might know that Race Across America is a 3,000 mile race, literally from ocean to ocean, starts in Oceanside, California, and it goes to Annapolis, Maryland. So I put this team together to support FA Research. Um, that's Mike. So obviously, that's me in the middle, in the front. Mike. To our, are the pictures right, are, you're right. That's Mike. John's in the middle and Sean is on the left. Sean has FA, just like me. But FA affects different people in different ways and everyone differently. And 
I was diagnosed when I was 17. Sean was diagnosed when he was like 26. And um, so, so he was still on an upright bicycle at that point. Next slide, please. Um, so anyway, that that's just a photo of me riding across the country on uh, next slide. So rates across America, ocean to ocean, Oceanside, California to Annapolis, Maryland, across the desert, over the Rocky Mountains and through the plains, all the way to the East Coast. Um, so get this, you wake up at 2 a.m. after two and a half hours sleep. And first of all, you try and remember where you are. Then you get up. You scarf a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for fuel and you ride like mad in the dark, in the rain, somewhere in Indiana. But it wasn't peanut butter and jelly, as you can imagine, that fueled our team across the country. It was purpose. About a week before the race, I got an email from somebody I didn't know. Dear Kyle, I just wanted you to know that one month ago today, my 12-year-old daughter, Natalie, was diagnosed with FA. Next slide. I look online and I can't find much hope. But every time I see your team, it gives me hope. Thank you for making this Excuse me. Thank you for making this mother realize that it's not too late to find a, a treatment and a cure for my sweet baby. As you can imagine, that was the message that drove us across the country. Now, during Race Across America, uh, you saw all those little dots on the map. All those little dots were uh, uh, time stations. And so we had to call in, we had to get to a time station. There you go. And we had to call in to race headquarters so that they knew we weren't just like taking a cab across the country. And uh, so along the way, there were FA families at several of these time stations. Um, but the one that sticks out to me is Jack. You can go to the next slide. Jack and there we go. Jack and his family came out to meet us about a hundred miles from the finish line. It was day eight, and I was tired, sore, and crabby. I pulled into the time station and immediately I saw Jack and his little walker and his tiny leg braces and I started feeling sorry for him. I was feeling sorry for the fact that Jack had to deal with FA at such a young age. But then he came up to me. He looked me in the eye with pride and confidence. And he said, hi, I'm Jack. I have, excuse me. Hi, I'm Jack. I have a track too. And your team has inspired me to ride five miles in my neighborhood for FA research this summer. Now, when we call, when we reach the time station, you you have to call in within twenty minutes of um, of getting to the time station. Well, we got a time penalty at that station because Jack's message. Excuse me, um, Jack's message really hit everyone on the whole crew, the whole team. Um, and we forgot to call into the time station. So we got, we got a time penalty on that one, but it was well, well worth it. You know, it was 
quite remarkable to be in this 3,000 mile race. And the one of the most powerful things in the whole race was this 10 year old boy seizing his opportunity to make an impact. And I also think it's really remarkable how we like we can affect each other by the things we say and by the way we treat each other. Um, I didn't even know it. Like I had just met this kid. Um, we're really good friends now, but I just met him and he had the ability to so deeply affect me and my team. And I think that's an ability that we all have every day. It's just as we go through life to, uh, to positively affect other people. Um, and he, he had no idea the impact he was making, I don't think, at that time. And I think that goes along with any of us. We don't know how our actions are going to impact the lives of other people. And uh, so that's an encouragement just to, to, uh, to remember that and, um, and remember that we all have that power. All right, next slide. So on Father's Day 2010, Team Farah crossed the finish line of the world's... Excuse me, man, I've given this presentation so many times, but it gets me every single time. We crossed the finish line of the world's toughest bike race. Next slide. Not only was it a huge personal accomplishment for me but next slide it was an accomplishment for the entire fa community as i said before you know these are the people that truly drove us across the country and i think it's a lesson for all of us and and one that's not hard to understand um, I think purpose is what drives all of us. And um, I think one of our jobs is to find that purpose, right? And, um, you know, not all of us have found it yet. And it's really hard to do. But I, I think once you do, um, you know, that you'll find it easy to go to the ends of the earth to fulfill that purpose. Um, and so... You know, I I think one of the things, um, especially for the laid back bike report that I wanted to, to leave you with um, is that this never would have happened without my cat track 700. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think that's that's something that that everyone that's listening to this can relate to. Um, and I, I absolutely love, love my trike. So if you want to go to that, that last slide that, uh, you had up, right at Taxia. So, um, oh, back that up. There, there, yeah, there we go. Uh, so in 2009, I came on staff at the Free Jakes, a taxi, a research alliance, and we built a, a nationwide series of bike rides that anyone can participate in. And they're all single day bike rides with multiple route lengths, multiple route lengths so that um, we can span the spectrum of abilities. We have amazing support from Outback Steakhouse at every one of our rides. So we've got really great food. And it's just a wonderful day of celebration of the fundraising that, that we did um, leading up to it. And so this program has raised over $7 million since the beginning. And um, we raised about now we're, we've raised over a million each year for the past three years. Um, and so it's something I'm really proud of and something that I want to invite everyone to come out and participate in. I, I guarantee you'll have a really great time.
Uh, you can go to rideataxia.org to find out about it and to uh, sign up for the ride in your area. And this is just a small representation of some of the people that we have out at the rides and some of the fun that we have. So, Wow. <laughs> that was wonderful, Kyle. What an inspiration. Uh, I'm not going to let you go quite that quickly. I, was <laughs> and I have a few questions for you. Uh, while I have you here, I'd like to engage a little bit uh, with you on. First of all, yes, uh, your cat trike is wonderful. And I have to say that uh, Mark Eglin actually is the one that, uh, although you'd been on my radar for a long time, Mark uh, yep. sent an email to both of us saying, we ought to get together and get you on this show. So thank you to Mark, first of all, for helping get this set up. Uh, I appreciate that, Mark. Yeah, Mark's uh, a wonderful friend. Yeah. He's, he's a good guy, and I know uh, very, very uh, supportive of the Absolutely. riding action, uh, 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 movement as well. Um, let's go back a little bit now. So most of that talk uh, is similar to your TED Talk, the original TED Talk that you gave. Right, right. Uh, and I was wondering uh, what – I know that goes back a little ways. Tell us how that TED Talk came about, and and uh, tell us how that felt to get up on that stage, the, uh, probably the first time that you gave that talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um so i mean that was back when i mean ted talks weren't brand new but um it was there was a lot of buzz around ted talks and like so i was blown away and it's crazy because the way it happened was that i was riding bikes with a friend and he was like hey um i'm organizing this tedx event would you like to speak i mean and we were uh, it was it was amazing because we were on i was on my trike he was on his bike and we were in the bike trail together but um yeah it, i i was very emotional on stage partly because I didn't hardly sleep the night before and and I feel like everyone knows how like emotions are a little like different or heightened or whatever when you're when you're uh when you didn't sleep or whatever and um so yeah, yeah that was really it's amazing heartfelt, uh clearly Kyle uh, it, it's it's heartfelt I mean even if you give it today years later I mean what you say yeah. means so much uh, to everyone you talk to, and obviously you're just telling it from the heart. So that's that's clear. Um, can we? Uh, and and then of course the other major uh, way people have known you is from the movie called The A Taxi, yep. which you really haven't talked about. And uh, tell the folks, uh, tell the folks, this has also to do with the, the Ram uh, ride that you that you did and that you already talked about. But tell us a little bit about the movie and how that came about. Yeah, so I mean, so we had a documentary crew of six guys that uh, came with us on Ram, basically, and followed us. There was basically pretty much uh, a camera on probably about 80% of the time that captured everything. Um, and and it was a really amazing experience. These These were young filmmakers they had never made a movie before and um so it was it was you a unique experience to work with them um and so the the film has been really amazing it's an amazing vehicle to be able to tell the story and it includes the stories of uh, you know a, a glimpse into a few other people in the FA community. And so it's been an amazing vehicle to be able to tell the true story of the FA community quite accurately um, and reach lots of people. And if I don't say so myself, it, it's quite entertaining too. One it's of a the wonderful things film. And uh, so, so, People now, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I I watched it again recently. I found it on uh, Amazon Prime. I think it's available on Amazon. Is that right? Yeah, it is available on Amazon. I don't and, know if it's Prime, but because they, you still have to pay for it. But yeah. right, right, and also uh, Google Play. I think it's available there as well, if I'm not mistaken. Is that the only places? Or uh, uh, tell me if I'm right about that. iTunes as well. 
and so iTunes. Those, those are the three major places that it is available, and you can stream it. Um, yeah, and it, it, if you if you buy it or rent it, whatever, it's it's three bucks or something. It's not a big deal. You guys should uh, spend the money. Do it. It's it will uh, it will be informative. It'll tug at your heartstrings. It's great great film. Um, Kyle, let me, I want to catch up on uh, the chat. Uh, not much in the way of questions, but just like crazy kind of comments that just are wonderful. So <laughs> there's our buddy, oh, Larry. Uh, thank who you, Larry. He's not on the show today because we don't have room to put that many people on this new uh, platform. We will hopefully shortly, but thanks for watching, Larry. And uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, uh, you, let's Larry. see. Here's a month uh this was a, a guest from last month susan straley down in florida oh thank you susan appreciate that and then here is our previous guest who's watching offline <laughs> now and uh yeah he he understands that i think yeah um yeah and uh, i think the sadness is you know it's perspective and i love the way that that uh john put it out there you know it's it's something that we can incorporate into our lives and learn to live with and and experience incredible things despite or even sometimes because of it so. right oh and there's uh, bruce erdman redefining the definition of hpv yeah i like man. that uh and bill sprague yeah uh plenty of people will watch this and uh and even if it's even if uh, you're just a regular trike rider, you have no disabilities. We all have some disabilities, I'm sure. But um, yeah, you're going to be inspired. Everyone needs to be inspired, and uh, you do that for them as well. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, here is Dam Runner one. Yeah, that. thank you. And Mark Donnie McLeod, uh, still from uh, the UK. Very yeah. inspirational. Thank you, Mark. And there you go. Oh, appreciate All right. that, Donald. Very good. All right, let me hide that. Uh, let me go a couple more questions before I let you go. Yeah, here, Kyle. Um, I want to talk about some of the more recent things. So everything we've talked about uh, so far really has to do with uh, RAM kind of thing. And you're, you told the beginnings of your story, but. Um, you got a couple other things that are more recent now. Uh, one of them is your podcast. And I, all these things, by the way, folks, I'm going to have links to all this stuff and our previous guests as well, of course, uh, as I always do in the uh, description below uh, of this uh, YouTube video. So you'll be able to find them. But uh, Kyle, I believe you have a, a podcast that's that's going on. Uh, I want to hear yeah. a little bit more about that. Tell us about your podcast. Yeah, it's called the Two Disabled Dudes podcast. And um, really, the principle is that, you know, me and my co-host, Sean, who you met um, in that one slide, at least, and you've met him through the movie, if you watch the movie as well. But we find that when we talk about our disabilities and just about different situations and, you know, some of the tough things we it take, especially when we're laughing about it it really takes the negative impact away that it can have on our lives and so that's what our podcast is about we um interview a lot of disabled athletes and inspirational speakers leaders in the rare disease community and you know we really dig at the uh the concept of living life beyond circumstances so we really believe that life is much more than circumstances than the the hand you've been dealt and it's all about the way you react to it very good all right well i would encourage uh, folks to uh, start listening to uh, two disabled dudes uh, podcast right yeah so man we'll, we'll do that all right and let's finish up with uh, your most uh, recent uh, accomplishment and that is uh, putting out a book now what we haven't yeah. talked really about at all is uh the first uh long ride you took on a trike you kind of uh skipped over that and uh yeah. and and we're gonna we don't have time to go through the whole story but you have right. put that all into this wonderful book shifting into high gear 
uh, yeah. which I, I read uh, this past week. Uh, incredibly inspirational. So interesting and well written. Uh, you folks will love that. I, I encourage you to pick that up. Uh, Kyle, if you could just take a few minutes, though, and tell us about the book and what it's about. Yeah. So, I mean, all of my cycling journeys I've, are are documented. Um, and, you know, one thing I wanted to do with the book is just document our ride from San Diego to Memphis. Um, like you said, I kind of skipped over to I just said, oh, yeah, we reached Memphis in 59 days. Well, there's a lot that happened in there. And um, so the book is a, the story of that ride. But it's also the story of what was going on in my head, trying to figure out how FA was going to work in my life and how my life was going to change because of FA and how how everyone was going to work together to get to a solution. Um, and so, you know, it's a really, as you might imagine, it's an emotional read, but um, hopefully everyone can take something away from it in the way they approach life and and how they deal with challenges that come their way. Absolutely. Well, Kyle, um, I can tell you, I took a lot away from the book. Um, it touched me. And uh, the, the, the thing that sticks with me and uh, from reading the book is a section where you talked, where you, I, I guess initially you discovered tailwinds. You were having oh a really rough time gosh. on the strike, really had all kinds of problems. And suddenly you had this huge tailwind behind you and you went, oh my gosh, what is this? Suddenly I can, I don't yeah. have, I can barely pedal. And yet I'm going, you know, uh, 25 miles an hour consistently. How is that? And what you did was not talk about just the tailwind, but you talked about the metaphor of, of yep. the tailwind, right? And, and how you met people uh, in your life that uh, and and through fa and all the associations that became tailwinds for you and so um as we leave you i i want to say that uh, you are in fact the tailwind for for so many thousands of people that have encountered you and listened to you read your book seen your movie uh and 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 you're you're a tailwind for me kyle so i appreciate oh, so much that you, you that you were able to take the time to come on our show. It means a lot to me and I hope for our viewers as well. Thank you. Yeah, no, I really appreciate the recumbent community and um, you know, that you are one of the leaders that is um, charging forward and showing us how to be and how to be together as a community. So thank you so much for having me. Kyle, a pleasure. We hope uh, to have you on again sometime. So you take care of yourself. We'll see you again. Thanks. All right. Thanks All right, folks. Kyle Bryant. Thank you. Very good. All right. Well, we're going to move along, folks. We got a packed show here today. It got off to a late start, so we need to move along. But uh, uh, I want to, uh, at this point, uh, go to uh, our next guest. Let me tell you a little bit about what this story is. I saw a post this week on Facebook about the Australian trike maker G Trikes uh, starting the process of resurrecting the old Glide Velomobile. Uh, you folks may remember the uh, the Glide from our interview with uh, Ian Sims of Greenspeed a couple of years ago. Uh, it uh, uh, ve that Velo was originally designed at, Green at Greenspeed for uh, various reasons, and it never. Uh, went into significant production uh, at all. So a lot of mystery surrounding it, but it was a, uh, a very uh, important uh, Velomobile. Uh, so uh, today I'm happy to have the owner of G-Trikes on with us to talk about uh, uh, the, the latest news about uh, uh, the Glide and what his plans for the Glide are with G-Trikes. So folks, uh, please uh, welcome Jeff Wood from Melbourne, Australia, or nearby. Hi, Jeff. You're muted, buddy. Can you unmute yourself here? We had Jeff waiting for a long, long time. So are you there? There we go. Yep. Hi, Gary. Hi, everyone. Great to have you with us. Uh, so, uh, Jeff, this is a really interesting story. You posted earlier on Facebook this week uh, that you were taking over the Glide. And uh, instead of me going on about it, I would love to hear the story from your standpoint. Tell us about uh, wh how this all came about, if you would. Um, I, I was actually just down at Greenspeed um, talking with Ian and, and um, I saw the Glide, Glide stuff there and we just started to have a chat. and. Um, he, he was looking at um, getting rid of it and 
Um, and then I went back and talked to, to Brett from Custom Aero and we thought, we, we can make this happen. We, we can make this work. Um, so it's got a great design and, and we thought that with everything that we know with our racing that we've learned, um, you know, for the last few years and, and what Brett knows through his um, composite knowledge that, that we could we could get it and, and turned into a into a carbon monocoque and and um, you know, All right, so there, there, is, there thing. is the uh, the original glide anyway. So okay, so yeah. you had some ideas about what you could uh, you could do. So then what happened? Yeah, so basically, me, me and Brett sort of sat down and we worked. We mapped out a plan of, you know, this is how we're going to do it. This is what we want to change. Um, we went back and did a lot of research, you know, on the internet to find out what, you know, what people had liked in the past about it, what their issues and concerns were, and we thought, yep, yeah, we can fix this. And um, yeah, basically, we we went and got the parts, and um, you know, we're, we're getting ready to 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 release that soon. Very good. Well, that's so. That's really where I want to go now. So, <laughs> I know from uh, from uh, hearing from you uh, a couple of days ago, we were setting this up, and uh, I saw you guys were hard at work. You are like uh, the opposite side of the world and the opposite time in the world from us. So it was really the middle of the night then. I know it's the middle of the night right now. Therefore, you thank you for doing that. By the way, you are working uh, like it must be twenty four hours a day or close to it. Tell us what you're working on. What what, what are your plans here? Um, yeah, we're, we're working um, pretty pretty busy here at the moment. We're 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 trying to to keep our production going um, to support all of our race customers. Um, we're also continuously developing um, new stuff. The the blue bike that you can see was just a, a prototype that we've been working on and racing this year. Um, so we're trying to keep all that going along with. Um, getting the glide going and up and running and, and trying to get that done as, as quick as possible. Alongside all the other work that you're doing. So uh, just to be clear, uh, in case folks uh, didn't watch our uh, show a couple of months ago, um, uh, the racing trikes that you have, I, I think, are are they all for Pedal Pre? Would you explain that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So so at the moment, basically everything we build is, is race strikes. So, you know, doing six and 24-hour races around Australia. Um, you know, so we, we have a, a strict sort of, you know, rule book to build to and, um, you know, we support a lot of customers with that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's great. But, we, you know, we're just looking at, you know, obviously diversifying, you know, we've, we've built up a lot of knowledge and expertise over the last few years and we want to sort of, you know, see where we can run with that. All right. Let's get specific if we could, uh, Jeff. Could you tell us? Uh, so you you bought uh, the name and the molds uh, from Green Speed, and uh, I don't want to get ahead of what I think I read. I want to make sure we get it clear. So what are you, what are your plans specifically? I th you talked about something about like three uh, of the current glides you're going to make, and then you're going to uh, go. Uh, you're working on developing uh, your version. Is that do I have that right? Tell us tell us your version. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. There was there was um, some some parts and some bits left over from from Greenspeed's production run, um, so a few frames and, and fairings, and yeah, we're gonna basically package them together um, and and sell them cheaper than, than what they were, um, and that's just to, to help us get going to to sort of start to connect with all the customers out there and and get their feedback, and and then yeah, we'll go into our, our carbon. Um, carbon monocoque so so the aim will be to take uh, a fair bit of weight out of it um and but really sort of keep what the glide was about you know keep the carriers the turning the stability um and it's it's beautiful design so basically yeah just just you know convert it into what we know which is you know building fast fast light trikes and um yeah hopefully hopefully that's what everyone will like all right. Well, that sounds very interesting. Can you give us, uh, I know it's probably impossible, can you give us some sort of timeline on what you have in mind for the first three? And then when do you think you'll have uh, maybe the first version of your own uh, development uh, out there for people to take a look at? Um, yeah, it's, it's always a hard question when someone asks you that. Uh, but we're, we're sort of hoping that uh, the three that we've got will be, will be ready to go in the next sort of four to six weeks. Um, they'll be ready to roll out the door. Um, and then, and then having our own own version, you know, probably sort of, you know, June, sort of late June will be middle of late June will be the aim to to have that on the road. All right, I promise not to hold 
you to that, uh, Jeff, but I will hold you to your offer to come back on the show. Uh, I think maybe after you've got that version up and running, your own version of the glide and maybe have a little something to show us. Uh, I would love to have you back on and we can go into more detail about what you've done and how it differs from the previous and uh, and tell us where it's going to be sold and all the things people are going to be interested in when uh, this gets a little bit further along. Would that work out for you? Yeah, that sounds great, Gary. Can't wait. Uh, all right, that sounds wonderful on this end as well. So, uh, Jeff Wood, thank you so much for coming on and bringing us up to date on the Glide. We will see you again sometime soon. And uh, uh, we uh, appreciate you coming on Laid Back Bike Report. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Gary. All right. Thank you, uh, Jeff. All right. Uh, at this point, I think it's time to go to the sports report. So, uh, Denny, I'm going to let you read. I'll take over the directing here if we can. And uh, let me get you going here. You got your script ready to go? Yeah, don't forget to unmute yourself. Uh, there you go on the bottom of your StreamYard screen. Yeah, you haven't got it yet. Okay, okay, there, we, there go. we go. I thought I was going to read it. So Yeah, yeah. Let, let me slide this over right and cover up my beautiful face here. I'm um, yeah, you, you don't need to see it. I'll take care of that. You go ahead. Okay. Yeah, when I've got a couple ready. monitors going on here, and one of them is kind of well. We're down here in Florida, so it's uh, um, I haven't really set up a studio down here at all. So uh, all right, okay, so let's get going here. The Dallas Senior Games <clears throat> last month in Dallas in Texas was the Dallas Senior Games. It was a good turnout from the recumbent riders. The gains had separate categories for recumbents and even divided them into two and three wheel categories. The races featured a 5 and 10K time trial and a 20K road race. Winners in the 5K were Doug Davis, Steve Jackson, Brian Stevens, uh, Jerry Robertson, Doug Kapir, uh, Gail Page, and Patty Erickson, and uh, Janie Kapir. 10K winners were Steve Weirs, I'm sorry, Steve Weens. Uh, Jerry Robertson, uh, Doug Davis, Tim Majinski, and Gail Page. And in the 20K road race, the age group winners were Doug G Davis in the 50 to 54, and Steve Weens in the 60 to 64 age group. Steve Johnson in the 70 to 74, and Ron Longston in the women's 55 and 59, and Gail Page in the women's 65 to 69 age group. It's nice to see a decent turnout from the recumbent community but there's a lot of room for more. More states are finally adding recumbent bike categories and breaking them into subcategories, uh, and it could be an interesting trend. Uh, if you have an urge to try your skill at racing bikes, the Senior Games is a real good entry into that world. Check with your local Senior Games promoters to see if the recumbent, if recumbents are going to be allowed in, in the, this year or in the future. If not, suggest that they consider them for the future. My uh, thanks to Doug Davis for providing the results. The Texas Ram Challenge was March 23rd. The open road, road single loop course started and finished in the Casterville, Texas area. There was a 500 mile race across America qualifier and a 214 mile open road race. There were no recumbents in the Ram qualifier, but three cruise bikes, challenged the 214 mile course featuring almost 9,500 feet of climbing. Maria Parker, Jim Parker, and Larry Oslin raced in a recumbent specific category and gave a good accounting of the hilly road race. Maria was first overall among all the women of, in upright and recumbent. And Larry was first overall in his age group. Jim Parker had a mechanical and did not finish. Uh, good job to everybody out there. Uh, now for something completely different, uh, Larry Seidemann, one of our guys here, uh, gave me some information about the Boulder Roubaix. Uh, it's a race that includes recumbents, adaptive cycles, hand cycles, and an 18.7-mile course that is 60% gravel and 40% paved. The course is in the Boulder, Colorado area. While it is open to recumbents this year, only adaptive cyclists participated. This year, the race was held on April 6th, and here are some of the results. Uh, adapted male trike, John Golshan, I got that right, uh, finished in one hour, 50 minutes, and Rada Reddish uh, was a second. 
adaptive was male hand cycle was Michael Arluda, a, a finished in 139.06. Second was Alex Goldmeyer, and third was Michael Solano. And an adaptive women's hand cycle, uh, Eulene Wagner finished in 150.05. And if for first place, an adaptive two wheel veteran was uh, Mike Howard, I'm sorry, Mark Howard, and a 209. Uh, first place. So while hand cycles, uh, I have seen a lot of hand cycles in the past, and I just marvel at the strength these riders got. Uh, they exhibit. Uh, it's well done, everyone. Uh, the race will be held again in 2021. Uh, and although it's two years off, uh, is I should note that there was really no recumbents again, but it's available out there. Uh, it looks kind of like it's uh, sort of a cross between a uh, road race and a gravel grinder, but it looks like it'd be good fun. And if you're out in the West and in that area and you want to give it a try, uh, we try to remember it uh, for the next couple of years. Uh, maybe I'll uh, mention it here uh, next, uh, late next year. Uh, so finally, the racing season is getting underway. While I do not cover as many as I can, I'm sure a lot get unreported. Uh, if you know of a race we should be covering here at the Laid Back Bike Report, shoot me an email to laidbackbikereport at gmail.com. And that's it for this month. Until next time, stay on the bike and keep moving forward. Back to you, Gary. Great. Denny, thank you so much for the sports report. And, folks, we're going to move along and uh, talk about those amazing sponsors of ours right now. So, first of all, let me tell you about TerraCycle. From fairings to headdress, wherever access, whatever accessory you need, Pat and crew have you covered. And trailside.bike. If you find yourself in Florida near the Withlacoochee Trail, stop in to see Andrew and his crew. And Cruise Bike. Their patented race and record proven front wheel drive geometry changes the rules of cycling. Now comfort doesn't come at the cost of performance, but fair warning, your cheeks may hurt from smiling. And lightning, surprising speed, comfort, and agility featuring the superior climbing quality that you've been looking for. Check out lightning recumbents today. All right, guys, uh, we have some announcements to make, uh, bringing you up to date on a few things, first of all. Uh, we have posted quite a few of the videos that we shot over the last couple of months, you might have noticed. And if you look at YouTube, you're going to see, uh, first of all, the most recent was uh, our latest uh, LBR at your LBS uh, video from trailside.bike one of our sponsors, as you know, and we were down there visiting with Andrew, had a great time. Video came out great, lots of interesting stuff as we got a tour there. So uh, check that out on our YouTube channel. Uh, we've also recently posted the Cat Trike Factory Tour. Fantastic. Um, we talked about Mark Eglin a little bit earlier. He took us around uh, the entire factory. We went through everything that's done. Uh, we got a great tour by Mark uh, as he as we uh, got to see each station and everybody working. So pretty good video. If you'd like to know how your cat trike has been made or any uh, any of your trikes are generally made, uh, take a look at it, uh, Cat Trike Factory Tour. We also had a visit to Trident Trike, uh, and we uh, were hosted by, of course, Tom Floor, a wonderful shop uh, there in Lincolnton, uh, North Carolina, just beautiful renovation uh, that Tom did there, talks all about that in the video. Have a look at that, as you if you will, on our YouTube channel. And uh, from the uh, hot rally, we hadn't posted this until recently, but uh, one of the amazing uh, moments there, uh, about an hour worth of moments, actually, was uh, Chris Park Parker from ICE, who gave a, uh, gave a talk about uh, kind of the unknown history of ICE. A really interesting slideshow presentation. Uh, you guys should take a look at that when you have a chance to. We hope you will. All right, so uh, coming up uh, this Thursday, I've got slotted to post the, uh, our visit, visit to uh, Bichetta Cycles. We did a video there, and uh, I, as you see, had a ride on the new CT 2.0, which uh, 
Uh, Trey followed along and got some shots of me there. We hope you'll like that. A little nicer view, a little closer view, I should say, of the upcoming uh, Bichetta trike. All right, so that's what's uh, going on. We also still have in the pipeline uh, another LBR at your LBS. The Angle Tech uh, video will be coming out hopefully uh, before we leave for Spetsy, if I can get to it, uh, if not shortly thereafter. Okay, what else is going on? There's some travel, of course, going on. Uh, the laid back bike report and bent rider, as we talked about earlier, will be heading to Germersheim, Germany uh, in a couple weeks for uh, Spetsy 2019. Uh, there's a view of our buddy Lars, who was a little under the weather today, so we hope uh, Lars gets better. But there he was on the back of a contraption, uh, which you'll see a lot of unusual things outside on Spetsy. That's one of them uh, that we saw last year. So we're looking forward to a great big uh, Spetsy video again this year, looking forward to getting out to Germany and having some fun out there. So that's one thing. And then, of course, we also talked about a little bit earlier our trip, uh, come on back to me, yeah, thanks, uh, to uh, Iowa uh, to cover uh, inner tuba. John uh, Hodkin, that was our first guest today, is going to be there as we talked about, playing his tuba, going to Ragbri. We're going to see if we can get some coverage of that and make a video of that too. So we hope uh, to have that out sometime later this summer. So a trip to Iowa is in the works for us as well. All right, now I want to go to viewer submissions. I uh, had an interesting uh, email exchange from a very nice gentleman uh, out in Colorado. Gregory Garduno is his name. And let me read to you what he uh, what he said. A few years back, I did extended test rides on two HP uh, Velotechnic uh, models, uh, a Gecko and a full suspension Scorpion. I like both, but I found the Scorpion much gentler on the back. Unfortunately, HP prices were beyond our budget. I've looked at used trikes on various websites in uh, in the area, uh, but all are more expensive than the new models I'm interested in. Uh, I found Cat Trike, Ice, uh, Green Speed, etc. He says, I've narrowed it down to Trident because of higher quality components, adjustable uh, seat mesh, uh, the fact that all their models fold small enough to fit into my 1992 Honda Civic hatchback, and uh, the other was Performer but they only had a, a single folding model, which is unsuspended, he says. Uh, I'd have to buy a hitch rack uh, to, uh, to carry their suspension model, which would involve some more dollars. My back injury was originally caused by an impact, so I have to factor that in. He's talking about suspension. So as you can see, I've put quite a bit of time and thought uh, into my research. Trident has a clearance special on their 20-inch Trekker suspension model, uh, 2149 plus 125 shipping, uh, and I think that's reasonable, and I think we can do that. So he did, in fact. There you go. You're seeing a couple pictures of Greg there. I'll be riding almost exclusively on paved roads and, and, and trails in the Denver area for the foreseeable future. My first goal is to be able to ride the 28-mile round trip to my oncologist's office for my next cancer follow-up visit in April. So, Greg, thank you for, uh, for sharing that story with me. Uh, and uh, we, we wish you the best with that new Trident. We hope you do well on it. Uh, next, from our buddy uh, Jim Verheel uh, in California, I had seen that the uh, latest American Society of Mechanical Engineers uh, a competition, young, uh, young person's competition was, uh, was being uh, held uh, last weekend. And Jim uh, shot me a message with some more information. So the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee created this tilting trike for the Ask Me Human Powered Vehicle Competition, uh, which was last week at uh, Michigan State University. You might notice a familiar front end on this entry. Jim Parker, worked with the team, resulting in the cruise bike dynamic boom front wheel drive that you see here. Uh, the team came away from the competition with mostly middle of the pack results, uh, but uh, they raced hard and uh, they did end up, that's, that's the uh, test that they do to make sure that it can roll over safely, by the way. And they uh, also uh, raced, uh, as you can see, against, against all sorts of other uh, designs from, uh, from uh, universities across, actually around the world. And at the end, it turns out they won the, uh, the innovation trophy. So uh, very unusual designs, always fun. I hope to get to another one of those uh, soon. Uh, so congratulations uh, to the, uh, the team at the uh, University of uh, Wisconsin at Milwaukee. Nice work, guys. All right, folks, 
If you have pictures or accomplishments you want to share uh, with us at the Laidback Bike Report, uh, put in an email, uh, get a hold of me, uh, laidbackbikereport at gmail.com, and uh, we'll see if we can't uh, put them up on the show and share with everyone as well. All right, what's coming up on the next Laidback Bike Report, you might wonder? Well, we already really talked about it. Uh, we're going to go to Spetsy at the end of this month. Our next uh, show will be May the 12th, Sunday, May the 12th, 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And as you probably know, if you follow the Laidback Bike Report, after one of our large events uh, that we cover, we do a review. Uh, Brian and I uh, and Lars uh, and uh, will be at, at Spetsy. So, uh, we will do the review show, lots of pictures of everything that we saw, and uh, we will uh, share with you uh, uh, what we saw and uh, give you our opinions of, uh, of what we saw and hopefully show you some new stuff as well. So we hope you'll join us. It's always one of our more popular shows. Always my favorite show. And there you go. There's Brian. He always says that because it is. It's really fun to do, and uh, we, it's one of our more popular ones as well. So And we, we get to cover all the stuff we forgot. Yeah, the pictures tell the story, don't they? And yeah. uh, and remind us, Brian. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, let's uh, let's move along then and uh, wrap it up here. I always, as I've told you uh, along the show here, we always uh, put the links that we talked about for each of our guests uh, into the description below the video that you'll watch on YouTube. We will do that again, and of course, we'll also break it up. Uh, into uh, little timed uh, links in a table of contents. So you can go to any particular section and watch pieces of this show uh, uh, when you have time to do so. So uh, just go to the description below this uh, video or any of our videos and you'll be able to do that. And Brian was just on. I wanted to thank him and Bent Ryder for their promotional uh, support that we get uh, every month from them. And uh, that is great. Our panelists who have worked hard on a new platform today, uh, especially uh, 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 Trey and Denny, thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate uh, you working hard. You did a really good job of, under the circumstances. Amazing, I think. So appreciate it. And I want to thank all of you folks for sticking with us. Uh, we got off to a little bit of a late start. I, I hope you enjoyed this show. So uh, thanks for sticking with us, and thank you, of course, for watching. Uh, if you like uh, and you you like what you've seen and like what you have seen in the past, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can look for that little notification bell right down there, uh, our little Layback Back Report uh, logo, which will take you to the page with a notification bell. You can click that, and it will give you a little notification every time uh, we go live. And uh, the little white I right up there that hopefully will uh, take you to our website for more information about all the things we do, our past uh, shows, our extra bonus stuff that we put up there. Uh, you can find all that uh, there and uh, like us on Facebook if you would. Uh, we would appreciate that. Uh, our website, uh, laidbackbikereport.com, uh, has lots of stuff. Let's go to that shot there and we can talk to the people about uh, what's on it. So, of course, our sponsors, all of our sponsors appear at the top of the page. I hope that you will support them. They uh, are the lifeblood for what we do. You're going to see our uh, most recent uh, show, our upcoming shows. Uh, also, of course, we've got our videos that we posted there too that are not necessarily webcasts. Uh, past shows, bonus material, you can find links for all those things, and you can sign up for our mailing list, uh, which I pop out a couple of emails a month, so you can do that. It will keep you up to date on what the latest is with the Laidback Bike Report. On those, you can also buy a hat. Uh, Larry Varney couldn't be on the show because we had no room for him today, but he was with us. We saw him on chat, so thank you, Larry. Buy that hat right there. It's 20 bucks, and it's $5 shipping and handling. You cannot go wrong. Uh, Fred, Fred is wearing one right there. He's looking kind of stylish, I think. So you can find it all on uh, laidbackbikereport.com. So folks, until our next webcast from all of us here at the Laidback Bike Report, so long, Bent Riders.